Okay, so, so now I have my file here and I'm gonna insert the image. And hopefully this won't take too, too long. Hopefully it'll work. Sometimes my Cricut's finicky. Perfect. So that's a little bit bigger than I want it to be. So I'm going to scale it down to, that's pretty square. So I'm gonna do 3.75, let's say. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this. You can give it an offset But if you do it as an offset, it's going to give you a lot of fussy cutting. And fussy cutting when you can't quite see the image is not really what you want. But you can see down here where the offset came up. You can do that and then you can turn your offset black. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to... So my image is 3.75-ish. What I'm going to do is take a square and just your regular old shapes here. And I am going to make my square four inches because my whole image will sit on top of that square. I'm going to move this to the front so we can see it. And it'll fit right in there. So I'm going to take my square and in this case I am going to turn it black. You could turn it a purple color, and there's more colors down here. You can do whatever you want. But I do want this black for this because it's going on a black cup. If you did a colored cup, you're going to want to do it as close as you can. But I'm going to do all of that, and I'm going to click on Flatten. And that is going to join it into one image for the print, then cut. And then I'm going to scoot over to Make It. And I am going to, and I hate doing these this way because it wastes so much of my paper, but I do save the paper to reuse again. So I'm going to pull my water slide out. It's got like a matte looking side and then the papery looking side. Obviously you want to print on the papery looking side. So you're going to come down and click on continue. I'm going to load my paper. This is not an eight and a half by 11, so make sure your, um, make sure you adjust your paper tray to hold the slightly smaller side. Otherwise it's going to print crooked if you just send it through like normal. So I'm going to do send to printer. I'm going to use my system dialog because that is going to let the um, print properties come directly from my printer. I don't need bleed for this one because it's just a square. So I'm gonna click on print and it should pull up my system dialog. Over here. And actually, I'm gonna cancel this. I'm gonna cancel it all because there's one thing I did not do. Yes, I am sure I wanna cancel the cut. All right, so what I failed to do is flip this entire thing because I need it mirrored. And I probably could have done it from my print screen, but if I'm gonna reuse the image, I'd rather do it here. Um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and save it also, just in case. For me, it's easier to have it done here because that way I don't have to remember the image or to mirror on the next spot. So now I'm going to go back and make it and start all over again. Continue, send to printer. It's just fighting through this because I have my printer hooked up right now, not my Cricut. So it's, it's doing its check for it. Um, 
so that kind of slows me down. System dialog back on. I'm going to turn the bleed back off. Okay. So I'm going to click on print. And now it should bring me up my dialog box over here in a second. And I'm going to click on preferences on my printer itself. And I want to print this as best photo. My black is almost out. I'm hoping there's enough to print this because I don't want to make you guys wait while I do that. Um, every time I'm getting ready to print, if I haven't printed in a little bit, I will um, make sure I run a head cleaning process. I don't know if I already mentioned that or not. I can't remember. Um, I already have it. So hopefully it will push through. It's just telling me it's low, not out. So I'm going to let it run. If it's too dark or too light, I will go ahead and change it. Um, but hopefully it'll work fine. It's not that big an image. But the head cleaning makes all the difference in the world if you're getting any kind of stripes or lines. And also an alignment thing that you can run. Most printers have those options. I think all printers have those options somewhere in their settings. Um, my printer is just a very cheap Epson from Walmart. I bought mine years and years ago. I think the new modern one is like... 70 bucks or 75 bucks but this is in all my years the best printer i've ever had so if this one should die on me i will probably replace it with the new version but this is printing it is done now so i'm gonna bring it up and show you there it is the image is mirrored and it had to be mirrored because it's going to get applied face down. So you can actually see through there where it says it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. Had I not remembered to go back and do that, I would have been in a world of hurt. Now, I'm going to actually trim this because I will actually go ahead and send that bottom piece back through my printer at some point. And in all honesty, sometimes I will tape this down and print something that small, just taped to a regular piece of printer paper. So I'm going to save those. I will put them back in the front of the package. That's how I store my little pieces. So I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to let the ink dry for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to take it out. And it's getting kind of dark and it's really buggy, but I want to show you how I do it. So, um, I am going to bring you out with me in just a few minutes. Okay, so bear with the shaky video. There's a ton of bugs out here and I am holding you in my hand. But I'm going to take my Rust-Oleum 2 times Matte Clear Spray. And I'm going to give it a couple coats with that. One in each direction. And I'm going to let that dry real quick. It shouldn't take too, too long, but I will be right back. Okay, so I'm going to come in next with my um, Rust-Oleum Painters Touch 2 times Ultra Cover Paint and Primer in Blossom White. This one's a satin. It's what I have on hand. It's basically what I've been able to get for white lately. So, um, I'm just going to cover the entire image with that and this is part of why I don't print and cut these images because my Cricut will not be able to read the cut lines at this point. Um, I can still sort of see the image through but my Cricut won't make out those cut lines so I will just scissor cut this down to the size I need when I am done. So I'm going to let that dry. Once that's dry I'm going to spray it again with the clear. Um, you don't need to see that part again. I'm just going to give it a couple minutes to dry. And then I will be back inside to actually apply this to a cup once it is dry dry. 
Okay, so here's the black base cup. Um, I am going directly onto the spray paint with this water slide. I just peeled the water slide off the paper, um, or off the board I'd spray it on. I taped them down to old Cricut mats, just so, trying to get my dog out of the room. Just so I have a solid surface. I did touch it. I don't think it'll be a problem, because I don't think that's, um really a part of the image but I'm just gonna trim pretty close to my edge there you want to make sure you seal before you cut anytime you do a water slide otherwise you can seal it right to your paper and that's gonna be a problem so and I know this is gonna seem small on this cup but I'm gonna do a little something something to it so I'm gonna go ahead and get it wet hopefully it's dry enough to release it should be fine it's been sitting a while in front of a fan I have a paper towel ready for dry and I'm gonna get one for wet I'm gonna get my cup damp when you do water slide you want your cup damp to start to help it slide And I'm just going to let it sit there a second while I check my water slide. And I can clearly see that has released, so I'm going to remember we did it mirrored. So I'm going to try and get this lined up as straight as humanly possible. I'm going to pick it up a second so I can see it a little bit better. I think that'll be okay, actually. So, I'm going to squeegee before I slide. <clears throat> Even though it's already sliding. And I'm just going to slide off my paper. That simple. So you can still kind of see the edge. <clears throat> And actually, I didn't cut it very well. I can see the white over there. So I will trim that off in just a second here. But look how crisp and clear that looks on there. So I'm going to... I would grab my X-Acto knife, but I think it's in the other room. One of them. This is my bent one. must have some kind of a blade in here. I don't really want to. I may have to lift the edge and scissor trim it if this won't work. Yeah, that is not going to work. I can't believe I missed. I mean, I can because it's me. I'll be right back. I have three or four X-Acto knives and they get dragged all over the house for different projects. So, and I'm going to end up wrinkling this while I cut. All right. So there's that piece. Now I need to get the bottom. I'm going to see if I can hold it down with the edge of my ruler. Nope. I'm actually going to see if I can hold it down with the edge of my squeegee a second. Just to kind of line it up a little bit better. up again where I have you guys I can't quite see what I'm doing I'm gonna turn it around a second the little sticky part is sticking really well to my hand 
try and lay that back out flat again. And just nicked my cup. Okay, I'm done. I just nicked the cup a little bit, so I will grab my black spray paint in a minute when the cup is dry. And I will grab a Q-tip and just spray a little tiny bit of spray paint and then dab it on with that. That's my normal fix for when I mess up something that's painted. So I'm just going to wipe off all the excess water at this point. It's one of those little floating white bits. But again, I will get that touched up. It'll be fine. But I'm going to let this water slide sit and fully, fully dry before I mess with the cup at all. So, I will be back. But, I like it. Okay, okay, so I have this touched up around the edge. I have my resin mixed up. I'm going to add some of my Girl's Best Friend Diamond Dust to this. So, I'm going to add a bit. And that is plenty. A little bit goes a long, long way with these. It's pretty personal diamond dust. So, they are super fine. You don't need a ton. Get that mixed in good. All right. Let me get that on the cup. I'm doing a pretty heavy coat because I'm going to add some chunky glitter here as well. So, and I want the chunky to have something to lay down into. Okay. I'll let that smooth out a second. I'm going to switch my glove out. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I have is a chunky purple mix called Milky Way from Element OP Design Boutique. That is what I'm going to use for my other glitter. And I'm putting a piece of paper down even though it's already got uh, resin stuck to it. But I'm just going to sprinkle this on the top. Edge. If some of it travels, that's fine. I just don't want it to travel over the image. I'm also going to sprinkle the bottom. Is that like holographic type purple? So, I know it's difficult to see over the black base, but it is there, I assure you. I'm going to throw some at the bottom. Doesn't have to be full coverage, but. 
I do want a decent coverage on the bottom as well. So I'm going to watch it come around the top again. I'm just going to come very, very high and give it a sprinkle from up high just so they can kind of go a little bit more everywhere. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to run my finger along the edge just to push any of those chunkies back down. All right, I'm gonna pop these gloves off and bring you down so you can have a look. All right, here we go. See, you can see it on there. I'm gonna let it come around again so you can see the decal. You can see where it's sprinkled all around. But there you go, a white water slide, or clear water slide, excuse me, on a dark base. Chunky. And the entire thing is sparkly. So, there's the bottom hard to see because the light's not hitting it but that is it for this one thank you for watching